so, so what's your response to that issue, first of all? About the Monte Carlo the, idea and the statistical aberrations. Yeah, well, to me, that, that would be highly questionable in a court of law. You're saying, Your Honor, this doesn't work at, at the, for the short time frames when we can actually test it other methods, but it does work for the long time frames where we can't test it with any other method. I mean, that well, to me sounds real suspect. Well, is there any type of test, independent test, that will confirm these dates without, you know, having to assume that we need 6,000, 20,000, 40,000, 5 million years? Is there something that we can actually observe to independently verify these dates? What would, it, what would it mean to you to verify the dates, to get those exact numbers or to get them in the right ballpark? Well, you're, you're saying that uh, we can't observe something and then date it because if we observed it, then there's not enough time for it to date. That's, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying that you said, in general. Well, that's, I'm that's the general Specifically for volcanic eruptions, so that's a problem. But you said the daughter isotope is uh, so, so small that it would give a statistical deviation. Which because is too we, great. Exactly. Yeah. If we can observe something then that kind of negates it and tosses it out of the field of things that we're allowed to radiometrically date with potassium argon, for example. Is there something that we can observe that would independently verify radiometric dating? Yes, but not with potassium argon that I'm, that I'm aware of. I mean, I, think I could be wrong. Uh, I'm just saying that this is, this is a very plausible reason why this would happen, although I'm, I am, a friend of mine just told me that actually one of the problems with Mount St. Helens was that they were, uh, using rocks that were embedded in the lava flow that weren't actually from the flow itself. So that, that's a different, you know, incidental issue. It, it, it has nothing to do with the general phenomenon. But, I, but uh, actually, yeah, carbon dating has been verified by finding artifacts from ancient cultures that we dated uh, through other ways, obviously, you know, lineages and things like that, and they do match. Well, now, I have the calibration curve back as far as Egyptian mummy Hemica, uh -huh. um, and it is, it, it is, if you took just those statistical points and tried to develop a curve from it, I think you'd find a real, you could find 5,000 lines or curves that would approximate those data points. It's, that's where bias comes in. So it would approximate, the, what, what do you think? You're saying that their, their interpolation isn't correct? There's, or? The, there are serious uh, interpolation in these, the few data points that are available, like from redwood trees, et cetera, you know. You find tree ring dating and Egyptian mummies and ancient manuscripts that have a, a fairly well-established known age, probably within a, a, within a few tens of years or a few dozen years. Right. I don't think many would argue that, yes, this mummy was from King so-and-so, and he lived at such and such a time. Uh -huh. And you carbon date it, and you get a number, and you develop your, your calibration curve from those data points. Um, or with potassium argon, though, you've got a real serious problem. How, are you, how do you have any verifiable dates? Well, that, this is one thing that I was mentioning before. Is um, prior to the to the advent of radiometric dating, they they had estimated the ages of layers in the geologic column through other means, not just sedimentation rates, but other inference. Like how they had, like, they had come up with uh, ages that were, like I said, they weren't they weren't that great, but they were in the right ballpark. They were talking hundreds of millions of years. If you if you look at Darwin's mm -hmm. arguments in Origin of Species, he talks about the layers being hundreds of millions of years old, and he didn't have radiometric dating around. Well, so, but so when radiometric dating came came around and verified that they were in the right ballpark, that's that's pretty good scientific evidence that they were on the right track. Okay, now, I got a real quick question here. You said that uh, radiocarbon dating is kind of independently verified, and all that good stuff. Right. I've got a, a few examples here um, showing tra or actually amounts of carbon fourteen still in uh, objects that are supposed to be hundreds of millions of years old. Should we pick anything up with carbon in it that is actually this old? You know, um, for instance, they said a fossil wood found in Upper Permian rock that is supposed to be 250 million years old still contained carbon-14. A uh, sample of wood that was found in or classified as Middle Triassic, uh -huh. supposedly some 230 million years old, gave a carbon-14 date of 33,720 years, plus or minus 430 years. Should why does it, why does it have any carbon in it? Yeah, should we be finding any carbon in something carbon that's 14. 213 million years old? That's a really good question, and to be honest with you, I don't have an answer, but I, I would suspect that there might be other processes that would affect it. I mean, if it's, if, it's, if it's sitting there for that long, there might be reasons why the carbon can, you know, change or be taken out of the sample or whatever. I, I just, I don't know. Well, yeah, there are, there are processes that can take carbon out and introduce more carbon in there. Right. But what I'm asking is if, if we cannot, I mean, if you cannot you see the path of something, and because that's the same for many of the different radiometric dating techniques, if you cannot observe the past of it, then how can you assume 
that nothing has affected it all throughout the past, especially if you want to have these huge histories of millions of years, hundreds of millions of years, billions of years. How can you assume that nothing has affected those ratios in billions of years? You can't assume it per se, it, it, just with pure logic. I mean, obviously, I mean, your point is well taken, and that's just stupid to, to make that assumption. But if you're going to make an assumption to go with, uh, th- what you would go with is that th- nothing has changed, and then you see what effects come from that. If, if, it, if it turned out to be the case, these dates were all over the place, then you would, you would say, okay, so too much stuff has happened for us to really rely on this. Well, not but even if, that. Say if we had two dates that gave us 50,000 years old, two completely different types of data methods, you know, is it, is it even a minute possibility that perhaps some event caused these things to become inflated and, I guess, uh, equally increased the ratios of both of those, making them both look much older in their own respects? Uh, which two things are you referring to? I don't know. I'm just saying any hypothetical two things that give us two different dates. For instance, Stephen Austin talks about aliens coming to Earth and measuring the uh, ages of you know high school students, saying they grow one inch every year from what they observed, and so they uh-huh. extrapolate that back. Uh, they're 72 inches tall, and you know, or two inches a year. You know, and they can figure out these kids must be like you know 72 years old. And they can also do that. And they can also check out the weight of kids and how fast that increases. So you know, so many different pounds a year and actually extrapolate that back and said, well, they must be 72 years old. Okay, because they never observed the past of it, but you can have two completely different types of dating methods that give the same thing when it's both completely wrong because you were not there in the past, but you can't know that. Right. It's, 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 a, good, it's a good question, but there, but there is a response to it. It's, it's that, like I said before, when you measure someone's growth, you're, you're, you're actually forming the curve, this, this linear, you know, line curve, based on data that you've gathered, but you're not getting the nature of the curve itself from the data when you're doing radiometric dating. Well, with people, we can observe their history. You know, right. we can watch our little brothers grow up, right. and we can tell how this growing event takes place, you know, what time, you know, maybe they got hit on the head with a board and so they're two inches shorter for some reason. Uh-huh. You know, we can figure that stuff out, but if you're not here to observe the whole history of the Earth and different, you know, materials that we're radiometrically dating, then how can you be so confident that you're going to be right whenever you get these responses? A, a closer analogy would be if you measured someone's growth and you didn't know how old they were at all, but you measured their height from uh, a certain year to the next year, and then uh, given that you know how humans grow in general, you estimated their age based on that. But that, that's because you've witnessed you know, different records and so forth, people who have been here and observed hundreds, you know, thousands of years of human growth. Uh Who has been here that you can rely on who has eyewitness account of the entire Earth's history? Right. You can't can't know that, but what you you can know pretty reliably is that the decay rates are constant. You can, you just said you can't know the history. So how, what if you, you can't know, decay, the, yeah, we know the decay rate's constant, but we right. also know that things can influence those, right? Right. So, exactly. so here's the thing. Whenever you're looking at a particular sample, you would first check to see if anything has happened. If anything, well, that's what I'm having a hard time figuring out how you would know that. Yeah, you, you can't, know? without knowing the past of it, you know, if, I, if you come up to me and see there's $50 in my bank account, how are you going to know that I made a withdrawal yesterday of 75 and there was originally, you know, 100 well, Jared, we're going to run out of time. Let me give you one, one to think about here. There's an article in Planetary Sciences Abstract, uh, 48th Annual Meeting, uh, page 167, that says as much as 80% of potassium in a small sample of iron meteorite can be removed by distilled water in four and a half hours. Uh-huh. If you can take potassium in and out of iron meteorite so quickly, how do you know, I mean, how could you trust uh, for potassium argon dating any sample of any age? Uh, well, too, okay. many, too easily contaminated, too easily leached in and out. I don't buy it. But what, what I would guess, again, I'm not a geologist, but what I would guess is that they look at the way that these layers were formed and they can tell whether or not it's... But, it's, but then again, you got to see that they did not witness these layers being formed. So well, they, I mean, it's, not a, it's not a verification. They still There's no independent verification whatsoever tied within the circle of madness. I mean, the, okay, just let me, let me make one more comment. I mean, your comments are... Uh, valid in the sense. Well, it's the end of the program. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't okay. mean to stop it. End of the program.